clients and how to uh, keep them because it's important when you get the clients, you, you keep them. Uh, we're also going to look at how, um, and then we look at other things you might need to succeed as a writer who creates content for the web. So those are the things we're going to go through. Uh, but first, let me start with this. Uh, everybody uses the internet. Um, internet has changed a lot in the way we live our lives. And turns out that they, what makes internet, internet is content. Think about it. Without content, there is no internet. It's content. Could be video, could be text, could be audio, could be graphics, could be anything, but it's always content. So the internet is there because there is content. If there is no content, then there is no internet. Um, and who creates the content? Uh, more than big tech companies don't create content. They just create the platforms and they expect that people are going to create the content. And here is something that most people don't know. When these big tech companies create these platforms, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all these other platforms, they are creating these platforms for people to create content so that they can invite publishers Publish, not, not publishers, they can invite uh, advertisers, people put their ads there and try to convince people to buy stuff. And those people who are putting their ads there are paying, of course. And that's why these companies are making billions. Uh, but there are also billions that are going to the pockets of publishers, people who are creating the content. It's not like they keep everything. Uh, sometimes we complain like they are giving us a very small part of what they make, but they still give out money, which is substantial. And many, I think I could, I think millions of people uh, live off the internet. Like they, they earn their uh, living from the internet because of that structure of create, con create a platform for content. And then uh, people create content uh, and then advertisers will come and, and put their ads there and then people come consume the content, will see the ads, and maybe they'll click on the ads or maybe not, but the advertiser will pay, and then the tech company will take a cut and give the publisher some money. So that's how basically the whole system works. So if you didn't have the idea, I think I've given you some basics of how the internet, of course the internet is big and there are very many different platforms. How Facebook works is not the same way uh, Google works or how Twitter works is not the same as uh, say how uh, some other private or blog works. So it's a huge place with different kinds of uh, structures when it comes to monetization and how people make money. But the basic idea is always create content, have people come consume the content, have the um, advertisers come try to, uh, to catch the attention of the people who are consuming the content. So that's how it works. Um, if I'm not very clear on that, then you can tell me, I explain some more. So uh, this, is how I got, this is how I got into writing for the web. Um, I think for a very long time, I thought of myself as someone who can become a writer, or I always dreamt that one day I'll be a writer somehow, I didn't know how, but I felt like I could be a writer. So um, it was late 2013 when, um, when I went online. And, and it's funny how that happened is because I went to some event and then I met this gentleman and we were talking and he told me, oh, you I told him, yeah, I can write, I can create content. And he told me, oh, you should go check this site. And he wrote a piece of paper uh, with the um, URL of, uh, one of the freelancing sites and I went check there signed up um, I thought I was a good writer but you always think we are a good writer until you write something and people go read and then you realize no 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 you are not a good writer uh, so I was really bad it was terrible but somehow I got someone who wanted me to write mostly it was reviews uh, reviews um, of apps so he wanted me to go through some apps, download them, get a feel of them, and then write some reviews. Then I, I started doing that, and that's where it started. And 
it's now seven years I've been doing only that I've been writing for the web that's what I do full time full time um, I don't think I can be comfortable to do any other job um, I'm, I'm so used to this um, so so that's basically how, how I got into this uh, so how do you get uh, into writing for the web the very first important thing you need to find out is what kind of web content can you create uh, for today we are talking about text content writing but there's a, there's a way that you find yourself even if you are a writer you find yourself doing video or some other forms of content uh, but the first thing you need to find out is what kind of content can I create for the web? And how am I going to, to get uh, revenue from that content? And there are so many ways to do it as a writer. So I'll talk first about you being as um, working for yourself. That's one way you can do it. And working for yourself, I mean like creating a blog create a blog around something that interests you, you are so passionate about, start writing about it, and, and um, you start getting people to come read your blog. And as people read your blog, you are getting these numbers, then you can start monetizing those views through putting ads there and, and you get earning some money. And one thing I need to mention about blogging uh, so many people try blogging, uh, even me, I tried so many times, but lately I came to realize there's a way, uh, there's a mentality we go in with which doesn't work for the web. And the mentality is you, you just write a blog and you write what you feel like writing and you expect people to come and read. Sometimes it works, but it can only work when you do that. It can only work if you already have a big uh, brand. You're a big person. Everybody knows about you. And then you go start a blog and then you write about your life or whatever you feel like writing about. And then people read. If you are, say, Jeff Koinange, for example, and you, you started a blog, if he writes about his life, people are going to read. People are coming, will come and read. But if you are not Jeff Koinange, you're just somebody somewhere then just writing, starting a blog where you talk about yourself is not going to help you. You need to start a blog where you are helping solve people's problems. Uh, think about it. Every time you have an issue, you consult Google. I know mo most of us do that. You have a question in your mind, or sometimes you are not feeling very well, you're feeling like you are sick or something, you go uh, consult Google. Uh, so. People are asking Google a lot of questions, and these questions need to be answered. And who is going to answer these questions? Writers are going to answer these questions. So you should start from that um, perspective that I'm going to create. Um, I'm going to create a blog where I'm going to help people solve their problems. And that means it's better if you start a blog uh, in an area that you are kind of an expert. Um, if you are a teacher, for example, you might start a blog where you try to help parents um, help their kids learn, You're giving parents advice on how to help their kids uh, with their education. That is a very good idea if you are a teacher, for example. If you are a nurse, for example, or a doctor, for example, um, you could start a blog around that area and find questions that people ask online related to their health in that in the area you are an expert in. And you can answer people's questions. If you are uh, working in a bank or you, are fine, uh, you, 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 you deal with finances, you can start a blog explaining to people, answering people's questions about finance. And when you do that, you, you start seeing views coming. You start seeing uh, people coming to you through Google and other platforms and they come and they as they come you getting these views and before you know it you have this big um, traffic that you can monetize through ads and, and things like those so that's one way you can do it another way you can do it um, without writing for other people and writing for your server but you're writing for the web is to do ebooks um ebooks is a big thing now uh you can write books you can even write stories uh, if that is your thing fiction 
and you package your stories very well in nice ebooks nice books and you publish them on amazon or wherever you can online and and people can buy them now but the thing with ebooks is that you have to be very good with marketing you, because it will need you to do a lot of marketing so you can't just publish and leave the book there and you hope that is going to make you money you need to do a lot of marketing so you should be aware of that so those are two ways as a writer you can you can write for the web without working for other people and you can make money now let's come to the other side of now writing for others there are people online who have platforms and they're looking for content and uh, this something there's something that many people don't know uh there are no writers like you try to be the one hiring and then you realize that there are no writers there are no writers like there is a big shortage of writers it's weird to say that because everybody out there calls themselves a writer but here is the problem people are not just looking for anybody who's calling themselves a writer they are looking for someone who can give them value someone who can create content that is engaging content that is delighting content that can hold writers readers i mean content that is um, is good content so if we are talking about that kind of content there are no there are no writers so you should know that so people are always trying to hire they are looking for people to hire to create content for them and what kind of people are we talking about bloggers the people who have blogs they want to put content there they don't have the time to write content or they want a lot of content maybe they are writing the content themselves but they feel like they are not uh, writing enough content so they need somebody to to help them with that so you should, that's one example of people who need you to um write for them and they will pay you for that um another type of client will get to need your content are companies um and businesses both small and big businesses are looking for writers writers who can write their blogs writers who can do their marketing materials i'm talking about um uh, newsletters uh, marketing brochures uh, emails so let me go through a list of the kind of content you might write on so we've talked about blog posts you know what a blog post is just an article where you tackle a particular question or you try as i said the best ones for the web is you are trying to answer questions that people are asking so that's a blog and of course there are so many types of blogs and you can even include news articles you could consider them blogs um then we have the marketing uh, materials like newsletters yeah you can get those clients companies that want somebody to do newsletters or in, nowadays it's more of email uh, if you didn't know email is a big thing and email pays well if you know how to write good emails for companies they pay well some companies can pay you as much as maybe 50,000 write us one email that is maybe 500 words but if they ping you 50,000 shillings that it doesn't mean that they just have a lot of money they just want to throw at you no 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 they are paying that 50,000 shillings because you're providing something worth the email you are writing is going to give them a lot more than the 50,000 they pay you or even more for very good writers so email is a huge thing uh landing pages for is another big thing on the web and landing pages are these website pages that if somebody for example a company puts an ad out there somewhere on the web somebody clicks on the ad the company must have something called a landing page and this is a page where you've written text that will guide that visitor in a way that it trying to lead them to buy whatever the clients want them to buy uh we call them a sales funnel uh so if you are very good at that it pays a lot but writing landing pages needs you to learn and learn and learn even do courses but you can start even without any training really 
by using the web to learn how to write good landing pages, they pay very well. A uh, good landing page can earn you even 30,000, 40,000. If you are very good and expert, even 100K, landing page, maybe 1,000 words, maybe 1,500. Um, product reviews, uh, if you, product review means you've used a product, uh, you want to say something about it, and there are websites out there that, publish reviews about products and some of them will hire um, you to do it. Some of them might even give you the product to try and then write a review about it. Just like people do reviews about books. Yeah. Um, sell pitches. A sales pitch is close to a landing page. Uh, it's a text, maybe 500, maybe a thousand words that will take someone from being just a casual visitor to our website, uh, to them buying something. So those ones pay well if you know how to write them. Uh, it's one way you can make money as a writer. Then there are marketing papers. I've talked about um, emails and, and newsletters. And then there are things like white papers. White papers will be like um, more technical. You will get companies, mostly startups, if you are, you are not really, and because big, big companies will hire big PR companies to do those. But mostly startups can hire you to help them write a white paper, which is like a technical paper that explains their product, mostly to investors, to people who want to put money in their company. And white papers will pay very well. You can be paid $5,000, which is like 500,000 shillings for something like 6,000 words long. But I'm just taking you the eyes, of course, depends. You can make even $20, depends. But the point is, if you're very good, you can make a lot of money writing white papers for companies uh, or startups if you are, you are just starting out because companies, huge companies will, will of course hire PR companies. But still even big companies, if they give this contract to a PR company, that PR company has to hire a writer. Yeah, that PR company is going to have a writer to work on that document. Um, video scripts, something that's now being becoming a big thing. And video scripts, um, here's the thing. People say, oh, writing is going to die because people watch videos now. They don't read. But what they forget is the best videos have to be scripted fast, even on YouTube. The best videos have to be scripted. I, I do a lot of video scripting nowadays. Uh, it's becoming a huge thing. So think about video scripting. You could decide I want to do video scripting and there's a lot of work out there, especially with people now producing videos. And video scripting could be for people doing like vlogging or, or even for companies that are producing um, uh, content for marketing purposes. Now. Let me talk about um, a specific, okay, let me mention the last one here is ebooks. I mentioned earlier that you could write ebooks and publish them yourself, yourself, I mean. But if that's not the thing you want to do, you could write ebooks for others who are ready to pay for it. You write, they pay, they just give you the idea. There are so many people who want to write books, but they don't have the time to write the books. Um, and they will give you the work, dry the books, and they pay well. Maybe you do 250 word ebook, and maybe they will pay you maybe $3,000. If you take two months writing that, that's not a bad deal. Um, so, um, investor pitches, these are more like white papers, but shorter forms where you, you you are helping a startup or a company to pitch to investors. Um, they want to reach out to some people to put money in their company, but they need an investor pitch. So they approach a writer who is, of course, very good with that. And you write them the pitch and um, they'll go share it with the investors and, and, and maybe hopefully they get to convince them to put money in their company. So. There's a specific type of writing for the web. It didn't really start in the, on the web. It's been there for a very long time. It's called copywriting. 
which is basically most of what I've talked about, creating content for marketing purpose. Um, is, 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 um, it's, it, it pays well, but you, it needs a lot of skill. It needs you to learn and put in the hours to learn how it's done. So you could do even blogs. You might consider them to be copywriting, especially if they are done for the purpose of, of uh, marketing or trying to encourage people, random people online to buy stuff from a particular company, from a particular brand. That's copywriting. Um, so it's a huge area. And uh, let me mention this for people who, because I, I, I know this forum is mostly for people who are doing fiction or creative. If you go and do your research about the best authors, the best novelists, uh, I can tell you that almost 70 to 80% started writing nonfiction. The best of them did copywriting. Just do your research. So even if you have a dream of later on becoming an author in, in fiction, this might help you. And it helps you because of this. If you want to be a creative writer, you need to do a lot of learning on how to write. A lot. You need to be like every day you're writing something. But if you, 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 you have to go do a different kind of a job, then you'll be losing a lot of hours that you need to practice as a writer. But if you get into copywriting or blogging or, or any of these kinds of writing, script writing, you're getting paid and you're doing that practice. You're getting paid and you're doing that practice. Um, now, how do you get clients on the web? Uh, looks like there's so many comments. Okay. okay. Yes, Daniel, even before you go to, you know, getting clients on the web, I think, thank you very much for some of the, thank you for what you've shared regarding the, you know, the introductory bit of it. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something that has shocked me, eh? mm -hmm. <laughs> that first you've mentioned rightly that internet is content and this content yes. is created by us, writers. Yes, yes. And you've said, that there is shortage of writers. Eh? Yes, <laughs> but a very is, big shortage. Very big very shortage. Big shortage. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there seems to be abundance of people who think they are writers or people yes. who are saying they are writers. Yeah, you mentioned something regarding, you know, if you are good at something. So if you mm -hmm. are good at this, you can be paid five hundred thousand. If you are good at this, I would really wish that you may, you know, go. Uh, you, maybe you can um, go over that a bit. How do you get to that point when you are so good at something? Mm -hmm. That you know, someone a company would pay you for 500 mm -hmm. word email, mm -hmm. they would pay you, you know, 30,000 Kenya shillings, and do not mind or 50,000. How do you get yeah. to that point? And then there are some other questions which I'll pick from the chat, then I'll, I'll share with you. Yeah, so yeah, as I mentioned, yeah, you are right, there's a big shortage of writers, uh, and you don't realize this until you did you try to hire people. Uh, I didn't believe that myself until at some point I had to hire people to help me with content. And then I realized it's not easy. And then I talked to people who tried to hire and then I realized it's really hard. People are desperately looking for a writer. They are desperately, when they get one that is good, they feel like they've uh, hit a jackpot or something. It's so hard to, to get a good writer. But how do you get there? to be that good writer that um, people will be so happy to get to help them create content maybe for their business or their blog or do scripts for their videos or whatever. It's practice. Practice, 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 practice. But it's not only practice, but practice combined with learning, active learning. Um, there are so many places online where you can learn how to 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 write but don't just go with the okay initially you can just go in with the like i just want to learn about writing but you should start to break down writing into bits like you might even be like i'll give you an example i bought a book because i wanted to learn how to do conversation the quotes the dialogue a whole book on about only dialogue, how to 
put dialogue within text just to give you an idea why how that um, how important it is that or how detailed you should be with how you are trying to learn how to do content attention to detail the one thing i've learned that most of us lack is attention to detail when we are writing most of us don't account for every word we use in a text you should account for every each and every word you use in the text and you should look at each and every word on its own in a sentence and you ask yourself is this word doing anything here if it's not doing anything there remove it attention to detail so if there's one thing I might, I might want you to go away with from this attention to detail most people are not good writers because they don't have that attention to detail so attention to detail be open to learning always trying to find out what is happening out there trying to teach yourself do courses some places are free courses online like in fact if you go to youtube there are so many videos that can teach you a lot about writing and you are not going to pay anything except of course for the data that you you will buy but also if you you want to be like better than that then you can go to platforms like udemy they are very nice courses very nice courses and when you go there you might decide i want to learn how to write an um a press release for example i didn't mention a press release but a press release is one of the biggest uh, it has the biggest number of requests from clients companies especially small companies startups they want somebody to help them write a press release so you can go there i've done a course on press release by the way just press release nothing else just how to write a press release and you do a course that may take you 2 3 days yeah huh? like eight hours a day you're just trying to learn how do i write a press release how does a, is a press release written and there's so many companies that will hire you to help them write press releases if you become really good but as i mentioned earlier practice 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 like every day you are writing something practice if you're learning about press release try to find jobs around press releases and try to write press releases every day every day before you know it and there is a funny thing with writing there is there are things that nobody will ever teach you they are unteachable but they are very critical and you'll discover these things only by practicing you write try try and then one day you realize oh this is supposed to be done like this nobody will ever tell even the best writing teacher on writing will never tell you that so yeah so to become the best start practice 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 learn 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 and don't forget attention to detail thank you very much daniel eh? yeah <laughs> i think you've captured it very well and there is a question that uh, relates to that from kevin gundi who is mm. asking where do we start could you recommend online resources for starters when a potential client asks you for previous works mm-hmm. and you have hardly done much you've hardly done much mm-hmm. much that's of relevance what mm-hmm. i think he, he meant to have asked how do you go about that when you are asked for your portfolio that and you don't you have. have nothing to show yeah now here is a, here is a thing if you, you, you if you you know writing there is an advantage you writing especially when it comes to the question of portfolio and samples and you know the advantage is you have ways of creating the samples So here is the thing if you want to do blogging start a blog I know somebody is going to say maybe I don't have the money to buy the domain and to buy the hosting okay fine go to our website called medium.com create an account there is free start writing write good blog posts there and then use them to show to your client the good thing with writing is somebody will not tell you you know you didn't do this for a company no 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 they just look at what you've presented and they will judge you on that so start a blog if you think you don't have the money to start a blog go to medium.com or go to linkedin linkedin have a publishing platform it's free 
publish your content. They, so, a, they have a very nice platform. Publish there your blog posts that you've written and then show them to clients, right? Three, four, five, ten of them, um, at least 1,500 words long. And, and then um, go show your, the, the potential client that here is what I've written. For me, uh, let me give you what happened to me. Although it was kind of, um, it was, uh, I took a long path to get something to share. The first time I talked to someone online about writing jobs, they asked me, can you sh show me a sample of what you've written? And then I was stuck because I had not created a blog. I did not have any published articles on, say, medium or anywhere i was stuck for a moment and then i remember there was a time you know story moja i know people some people know about story moja there, there was a time they used to do competitions short short story writing competitions and i had written one short story and sent it to them it was terribly written <laughs> to be honest but they were just starting out and they were not very firm on, on quality i think and they published it because they wanted people to vote. And it stayed on their blog for a very long time. I've not checked uh, recently to see if it's still there. But I took that link and shared it with him. And I think for him, what made him to think I'm a very good writer is the fact it was Story Moja. But it was a terrible piece of content. Um, and that's where it started. But the shorter route is create a blog or even uh, an even shorter route than that is go to Medium, uh, create an account, um, write articles, even on Facebook, write long articles on Facebook and share links to them. Doesn't matter where you publish them. As long as they are well written, you've given attention to detail. Don't forget, account for every word. Don't use words carelessly. One thing I've noticed, most people say they are writers, they are very careless with words. They use words carelessly. You just throw words. Um, in something you could have said with three words, you're saying it with 15 words. That's not good. Cut it down. Remove any unnecessary words, unnecessary sentences. Make it like very um, tight. Yeah. There are somebody I was seeing who was saying, when you are writing, write as if each word you are using, you are going to pay a bob for it. So you have, you have a motivation to reduce the number of words as much as you can because you don't want to incur a huge cost. Yeah. Wow. That is a, a very good <laughs> analogy to always remind you that each word you use is price. There is a price yeah. tag to it. Eh? Yes. <laughs> So there is, there, is a, there is a question here from John Wakahiu, which will introduce yeah. you to what uh, you had mentioned that we are going to next. Yeah. So he asks that, Daniel, mm -hmm. how does a good pitch look like? And how, uh, okay, how does a good pitch look like that has worked mm -hmm. for you? And the second question is, how mm -hmm. do you get clients? So that, is, that, that introduces you now to the next chapter, which you'd wish to talk to. Yeah, now I was moving to how to get clients. Mm. Uh, first, I want to, I, I, I read a lot of stuff online, especially, especially on, on Facebook, and I'm in these groups of writers, online freelancers. And there's this wrong uh, notion or wrong uh, view that it's about the platform. It shouldn't, so that you have these people even going to the extent of like, yeah, I'm going to sell you an account and, and then you will use that account. No, it's not about the account. Yeah, the account is important. But if I gave you my, say, Upwork account, I have an, a, an account on Upwork and I gave you and you are, you are a terrible writer, you will have it for only maybe a week or two and they will suspend it because they realize this is terrible stuff. So, the first thing uh, I always tell people, work on your quality. The quality should be great. And uh, where you get the job should, should, should just be a marketplace. It shouldn't be like it's, um, if they chased you away from that platform, your quality should always talk for you and you can always get jobs. But anyway, so there are several ways you can get jobs. 
And one of those is freelancing sites. Uh, these are sites that are created there like marketplaces where people who have writing jobs go post their job description there. And if you think you can do the job, then you send them uh, a pitch, uh, which I'll talk about. Somebody has asked about that. You send them a pitch and they look at your pitch and they decide whether they are going to hire you to do the job or not. So one of those is Upwork. Uh, they are the way they work is not exactly the same. Upwork and another one called People Per Hour kind of work the same, where you look for jobs, you find job posted, and you you send a pitch so that they can hire you. But another one like Fiverr, you create you create your own pitch and then you publish it, and then it's them, the people who want to hire, will come and look at your pitch and decide whether they want to hire you. So it's kind of the other way around. But the basic idea is the same. These are marketplaces where you go, you create an account, and people want to hire, create an account, and then they post jobs or you post what you can do. It links, it matches buyers and sellers to make it uh, simple. So yeah, there's Upwork, there's Fiverr, there's People Per Hour, there's Expert 360. And then there's another category of them, which I've never used myself. Um, we call them content meals. I don't like them. I don't like the concept really because personally, I like having a personal relationship with clients. I hate platforms where I'm turned into a robot. Uh, so there are those, uh, I'm forgetting which one. They are like, uh, iWriter is one of them. Uh, apparently, I hear they, they blocking Kenyans. I don't know whether that is true or not. Uh, they are uh, text broker something. They are those. Uh, so kind of content means, but for me, I prefer having a platform where I create personal relationship with the client. And that's always good because sometimes it even ends up them referring you to other people they know. And sometimes you are very good, you become very good friends, which is kind of nice. And I like that. So you can try those. You can also try other platforms like Craigslist. You can get some writing jobs on Craigslist, by the way. Um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is huge now. A lot of writing jobs on LinkedIn. I should go there. You should go there and, and look around. So you can find jobs on LinkedIn also. Um, and then even Facebook. Uh, if you are in, in those groups where writers meet, you can find somebody saying, oh, I have this job. So I'll, uh, I need somebody to help me with this job. And they can hire you. Of course, there's the risk that they might... Um, not pay or run away, but, but it's also an option that you can. Now, there's the other option of, we call it cold pitching. And cold pitching is you, you go looking for emails of potential clients. Um, I haven't done cold pitching really, so I can't give you how, you, can't give you, um, uh, I can't tell you how you're going to go about looking for those emails but you can Google online and, 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 and you can find ways of, of, of coming across emails of people who might potentially hire you to write for them. And when you get those emails, then you write a good pitch and you send it to them. The pitch includes explaining to them who you are, what you can do for them. And of course, sharing with them the samples that you have so that they can look at them and decide whether you, you, you have um, the capacity or you can deliver the quality they are looking for. Yeah, so you can try call pitching, you can try freelancing sites, you can join those, um, you network with other writers. Yeah, like I said, some of them get more jobs that they can handle than they can handle and they can share them out to, to you. So about a pitch that works, um, I think what I've seen people do, people are overdoing pitches. Don't overdo your pitch. Make it so simple. Don't over say what you, 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 you want to say to them. Don't complicate it. Don't make it flowery. Don't, uh, in fact, it's a kind of turn off. If when somebody does this, like it's so flowery, so like you're trying to write a short story or something, Make it simple. Just go straight to what you want. 
Maybe I'll read to you um, uh, one that I, I've used recently. Uh, let me read it for you. Um, hi, hi, John or, or David or wherever. Um, I just read your job post and I believe I have everything you are looking for. I, uh, I know that this is a bold statement, but hear me out. I have been writing blockchain related content since 2014. Up to 90% of the jobs I do here are related to the technology. Um, I attend events around me uh, related to this technology and the trends around it. Um, I'm efficient, passionate, I consent attention to detail to, me, to, attention to, detail to be my strength. Um, doing research, writing with precision, arranging content for more accessible manner, some of the skills I've learned over the years. Um, please look at the samples I've shared. Thank you. And my name, that symbol. And they get back to you. You should rely more on your sam samples than what you write in the pitch. Just use the speech to get their attention. In fact, most of them would prefer to look at the samples more than what you wrote in the, uh, in the pitch. Yeah. So, yeah, I think if you have more questions on that, we can come back to it. Now, how do you maintain clients and keep them coming? So say you maybe you've gone to Upwork, the people power somewhere and you've gotten these clients. Number one, don't accept jobs that you know very well you cannot deliver or you'll really struggle with. Don't accept those because um, here's the thing. People say there's Google. Yeah, well, there's Google. You can do the research. But think of that reader who's going to read this content. They can always tell. At however, you, if you come across a post online that was written by somebody who was struggling with a topic, you can tell, maybe not consciously, but you can feel this is not, um, this not, cannot help me, and then you move on. So don't accept jobs that you're not very sure you can deliver. Accept jobs that you're very confident that you can deliver. And then always understand what the client wants you to do. Very important. Make sure you understand what they want you to do. Uh, don't be shy to ask them questions. Ask them as many questions as you need to understand what they want you to do. Uh, sometimes if it's a review you have to write of a product, just feel free to ask them to share with you the product or mostly especially for software products for you to try it out and, and see how it works so that you can, you can write them a good review. Um, then give them quality. Um, and now here's a, a, another very important point that pe people will pay you for two things as a writer. They will pay you for the, your writing skills and they will pay you for your expert, subject, sub, uh, subject matter expertise. Most people go to writing and they, they just rely on being paid for the writing skills, which, which can work well, but if you want to really, uh, if you want to really um, make good money, try to be an expert at something. And that can be an expert in subject matter or an, an expert in a, a type of content. Let me give you an example. You can try, to, for example, if you've gone to school and you've studied accounting, for example, of any course to do with finance, or maybe you didn't go to school for that, but you think it's something you, you, you'll be comfortable with, you can say I'm an expert writer in, in finance, for example. Personally, I do financial technology. The content I do is related to financial technology. And because of that, I'm able to be so deep with it that when I deliver content to a client, they just feel it's really deep because I, I have the nuances of the trends within the industry and that can earn you more money. Or you can decide I want to be an expert in a certain type of writing, landing pages, for example. You just decide for me, I'm going to be writing landing pages and you learn everything, every trick that is there in regard to writing or drafting landing pages. And, and that will earn you more money. But if you, you are just the kind of a writer who is like, 
I write anything. Um, the people who are hiring you know it. They can, they can, they can, um, they can see that, and that tells them you are not an expert, so they will just pay you for your writing skills. So, of course, your writing skills should be the best, but also try to get some, try to be an expert at something. Yeah. So maybe there are questions. Uh, thank you very much, Bona Daniel. I think we are, we are doing very well, and um, I'm happy that uh, how you are responding to the questions which mm. uh, are coming. So John Wakahiu mm. is asking a follow-up questions. Have you had successful have you had success in getting clients in Kenya? Uh, yeah. yeah. So maybe even as you respond to that, mm -hmm. I'll just to let everyone know that we will give a window of you know five minutes. So if you have any other question, especially mm -hmm. on what Daniel has shared so far, you can be able to, to ask your question aloud. So I'll give a chance to two or three people before we keep, we go on to the next one. But have you had a successful chance? Uh, have you had a successful client in Kenya? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, no, I have not. Uh, I don't want to say that there are no people in Kenya who will hire you. Uh, I guess there are, there, are, there are businesses all over the place. So they must be hiring writers or something. Uh, they have content online. Maybe they are not doing it, uh, it as much as uh, maybe companies in the US or Australia or the UK are doing, but I guess there are, there are companies, brands that are creating content for the web and they must be paying. Um, I think um, when you work with a Kenyan uh, client, I think maybe it's because I didn't start with Kenyan clients and then that put me on a path where maybe we'll never meet. Um, <laughs> because um, sometimes it's it's about um, what you've been conditioned uh, to do or to expect. Um, if you told a Kenyan client that they will pay you, say, $10 an hour to write, most of them will have an issue with that. But if you told uh, an American client, especially if you are an expert writer and you told them I'm charging you $40 an hour, they might say, okay, let's make, that, make it 35, yeah? And they are fine. So there's that element of what we expect, but I know there are people who pay writers around, but I've not, I've not worked for one. Okay, mm. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Uh, so it seems that we have our chances out there. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone had asked, Christine, mm -hmm. Oye, mm -hmm. King, how long did it take you to establish yourself? To establish my style? Yourself, yourself. Oh, myself. Yeah. <laughs> in the introduction, you had mentioned that right now you do the content creation for the web full time and you can't imagine yourself doing any other thing. Yeah, I've been doing this full time for seven years now. Um, uh, maybe for those who don't know, I, 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 I used to work as a guard, a security guard, and I worked there for seven years. And um, I was working for this uh, Swedish family, and um, they, they had kids, daughters, and then one of the, the father bought the daughter a laptop and then I don't know, she went to a restaurant and then the coffee, the key, the, the, key, the, the keys. And then he took it to the fundi, it didn't work. Uh, it, it worked, you know that it didn't work, but it didn't feel the same. And he brought it to the daughter and he refused to take it. And I think the old man was angry and he came out, he was like, Askari, you want a laptop? I was like, yeah, yeah. So he gave me the lap, and he gave me, <laughs> he gave me, what do you call it, uh, the password to the Wi-Fi. And that's how I started. And I worked, I, I used to go work in the evening, and, and I would 
sit outside Kwafaranda and then I'll be going online. And then I got the first job. And then after that, I worked for them like three months. And after three months, I was making as much as they were paying me as a guard. And then I was like, I was so tired with that job. So I left. So oh, seven years I've been doing this. So I would say it took me three months to stabilize. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah okay and then um well three months to and and i think your journey is very there there is uh you are very lucky to that the lady got uh this nature of accident so you <laughs> relax from there <laughs> yeah it's god as you always say <laughs> yeah yes. it's it's god who showed you your way but yeah now, if if someone was to start now and mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky to get in the nature of an accident that you are in yeah. uh, to get a laptop like your case. Mm -hmm. where, would you want, where would you advise someone to start? If maybe any of our writers here mm -hmm. would start now, where would you start? Or where did you start? You? I, okay, I started on Upwork. If you are asking uh, about the, the place I got my first job, um, it used to be called Odesk then. They changed the name. They bought another company and they, they changed the name to Upwork. Um, so that's where I started. Um, I still get jobs from there, but now it's not like my only place I got. Somehow nowadays I get jobs from just people because, like I said, I got myself into this space of financial technology. And then I try to, if there are events around, I'll attend. If, if there are online events, I'll attend. If there are forums, I'm there. So by doing that, I'm, I get to meet people online and we talk. And they're like, oh, I saw you here. We were talking maybe on a certain forum. Um, or maybe on those forums, somebody mentions like, oh, I need a writer to do this for me. And I'm like, yeah, me, I, I write. And, and I, got, I get jobs like that. But yeah, you can start on freelancing sites. Um, yeah, like Upwork. Uh, it's kind of how you sign up nowadays is kind of complicated. When I started, you just signed up like you sign up on Facebook. In fact, Facebook is more complicated now than Upwork was then. Just put in your email address and your name and boom, you have your account. It's no longer the case. Now you need to apply, fill out the whole thing, and then send it for review, and then maybe text 24 hours, and then they get back to you. But you can still get an account there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then uh, Cecilia is asking, is it important to stay in touch with clients after you have submitted their work, or do you let them reach out to you? Uh, be a business person. Be an entrepreneur. Yeah, reach out, say hi. Come on, Christmas, one day, Merry Christmas. Some, sometimes I've done that and I get there like, oh, oh, there was this thing I needed somebody to do for me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, bring it. So, yeah, be a business person, reach out, say hi, wish them well. Yeah, be friends, try to be friends with them. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Now you are not only a writer, but you are also a business person. Eh? Yeah, that's the thing. You are, you are an entrepreneur. You, you, you do the marketing. You are a community company. You also have that department of marketing. So, <laughs> Okay, yeah. and uh, Kevin Gund is asking, I see complaints of clients not paying up for the writing services rendered. Has it mm -hmm. ever been you, and how do you go about that? Yeah, I've lost some money. Uh, that's part of doing the business. I've lost some money. Uh, yeah, not a lot, but I have. Um, but they, I lost the money mostly through direct clients, people who I just met on online platforms. On Upwork, you can't lose money because they have an extra service. But they even they, they introduced something nice. They just introduced, I think this month or last month, they now have an extra, if you have a client and you are not, you don't want to use uh, Upwork itself, Upwork can give you the escrow service. That means both of you can go there. You, if you, are to, you talk to a client and if you agreed on a price, you can just go to Upwork and put their email and then they are sent an email and then they'll put the money in an escrow account without having to have an account there. So that secures you so that the money is with a real person 
Uh, in case there is a dispute, somebody will listen to the dispute and decide who goes with the money. Yeah, if you're dealing directly with class, of course, you, you be ready to lose money. But yeah, and here is the thing I used to do, uh, or I do now. Sometimes you get these clients that you are not going to use an escrow service. So we agree on a price, and I charge them more than the people on Upwork. Uh, I charge double, by the way. And then I tell them they have to pay me 50% and they stay with 50%. So when they pay me 50%, this 50% is in fact the, what I would charge if we used, we used Upwork. So if this, they disappear with the other 50%, they paid me the full amount without knowing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a very wise way of going about this problem but yeah but now that's a service of upwork where you can i like it by the way because there are these clients they are not on upwork but now you can use that escrow service to protect yourself from such people who might want to disappear with your money ah okay 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 yeah. and then a question from lydia kimani hmm. now that um there is a covid there there is covid crisis is there work hmm. still yeah yeah, I've not seen any change, personally. I've not seen any change. Mm, okay. okay. Just the same, yeah. yeah. Maybe I don't want to say this. I don't want to say it's the same for everyone. Uh, but personally, I've not seen any change. Um, but I guess maybe there are, there are certain niches where something has changed. Yeah. Okay, okay. So then I just see from Liz Eka Koro, mm -hmm. wow, impossible is nothing. A great work, Daniel. You are inspiring. That is from Jerusha Kananu. Mm -hmm. You are inspiring. Your journey you. hasn't worked in the park. I like your attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the questions we have so far and the comments we have so far. <laughs> yeah, so it's about the attitude. And here is why I struggle, because I get so many requests. People want me to help them um, somehow uh, set themselves up as content, online content creators. But you, have, you find these people who, um, they just want to do it as a side hustle or they just want to do it while they are waiting for something. It, it doesn't work if you come in that way. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work, fortunately. Yeah, it might work for some people. I don't know everyone. But personally, I think it, it doesn't work. It has, you have to have that, like, I'm coming in, I want to learn everything. Because there is this component of learning. And if you are like, I'm waiting for something, then you might you, you you won't be ready to like spend ten dollars to buy a course on Udemy, for example, because you'll be like, why why should I spend money and I'm just here for? Uh, I'll move on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it somehow you have to commit to it and you have to not look at it as a side hustle like many of us do. Yeah, don't look at it as a side hustle. Look, at, and that's why I think it's a perfect thing for people who like have dreams of being um, writers. For example, somebody's dreaming like, I want to be a full-time maybe author, novelist, something like that. Because for them, then it's very easy for them to commit. Rather than somebody who is like, say, is a banker or is um, something. And it's like, oh, I want to do it as a side hustle. Kujazili a pesa mwisho wa mwezi. Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, many people are uh, really admiring you. And uh, uh, Geoffrey Mogere, who he was the second one to come. Eh, yeah. The Mogere, Mogere is, is we, we are from far. He's my classmate from high school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're quite inspiring. Trust me, you are doing great. Yeah. And, uh, Patricia uh, says, this is, this is informative. Thank you very much, Daniel. Patricia Molin Mataga. Mm -hmm. And Baraza Oliver, uh, this is amazing conversation and I will start doing this, I believe. Mm -hmm. I have, but I have just been sitting idle. Yeah, do something. Do something. If you feel like it's something you can do, and maybe one more advice I'll give for people who want to start um, 
for people who want to start. Oh my God. Hello. What happened? Yes, we can hear you, Daniel. Uh, I thought my, I don't know what happened to my phone. Yeah, and so. Yeah, yeah, well, we can hear you and see you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in the early stages, don't be so focused on the money. Yeah, of course, you're looking for the money. Yeah, that's obvious. But don't be so obsessed with the money part. Mm. Uh, be obsessed with learning. Be obsessed with being the best. Be obsessed with writing masterpieces, yeah? Uh, that should be your obsession, not uh, how much you're going to make. Of course, you can think about Of course, everybody wants money. But don't make it to be the main thing. Mm, that's why it's good for people who want to be writers because then they have the passion. It's not really about the money. The money is just, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like they say, the Bible says, you first seek the kingdom of heaven and then everything else you shall be. Yeah, so it's the same thing. You first seek the skills and the ability and the capacity, money will just come. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love yeah. that. You summarize yeah. it so well. Don't be obsessed with money. Be obsessed with learning. Yeah. You know, the curve is all, the, our funnels is always inverted. We want to yeah. come first even before we, <laughs> before we have yeah. some paper. Yeah, so many people are like, oh, how much can I make? Uh, that's not a good question. To Yeah, it's a good question, but no, it shouldn't be the first question. Uh, it should be like, how can I learn to do this? But I can promise you, you'll make enough to live on. You'll mm -hmm. make enough. And if you become better and better, maybe there are people who are really good. Uh, yeah, I've seen people making as much as 10 million a month and they are copywriter creating content online. Just a single person, it's not a company, it's just himself. But he can make up to 10 million a month. So you mean 10 million Kenya shillings or yeah, Uganda shillings? Yeah, yeah, Kenya shillings, not to Ugandan shillings. Okay. So <laughs> but but they are not getting the 10 million because they they just write. No. They are getting the 10 million because they really good. Come here, the guy I'm talking about, when you read, he, he does emails, by the way, mostly okay. emails. When you see the email he writes, you are like, yeah, whoever will read this email will buy the product. They won't jump. What an more. So, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, they're really, really, really good. So, it's not, don't look at that money and be like, yeah, it's that money. So, no, don't look at that money. Even if you come across such a person, try to look at what they do. How good are they? That should be the thing that interests you the most. And you try to find out how can I be that good? And, and to be honest, not everyone will be that good. I know I can never be as good as him. Yeah. But I can be my own good, which is still good. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You put it very nicely, Daniel. Eh? Yeah. Uh, 10, 10 million a month is something if you just get it from writing emails. Yeah, emails. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then Naomi Yatich asks, mm. uh, thank you. I would like to know if you can mm. talk about tone or direct me to some reading on tone mm. in content writing. Yeah. Uh, yes. She's called who? I'm interested to know this person. I think she's Naomi. Naomi Yatich. Naomi Yatich. This is a writer. Lazima wini this a writer. Yeah. <laughs> a very good question. Let me tell you something funny. Uh, getting the tone is the hardest thing. And it might take many, many years. Uh, I don't think you learn how to from a book. I'm not sure. Maybe there's a book out there. But it's something that comes slowly as you write and write and write. Here's the thing that made a trick for me. The moment I started writing uh, video scripts, uh, it helped me shape the tone and the voice. Yeah. So it's like videos forced me to write like I'm talking. And that somehow helped me 
discover, I'll say discover rather than say develop. It's more like discover the tone. You can. But here is another thing you should consider. The tone you use would depend on what you write. Um, and the, yeah, the tone, the rhythm, all those. The tone can be the same anyways, but maybe you can now use the rhythm to kind of differentiate depending on what you are writing. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay. And yeah. maybe it would mean that you, maybe as you keep writing more, then it will become clearer to you. You are yes. just beginning practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. That's why I said you discover. Mm. You, in fact, you stumble upon. You don't even, yeah, maybe stumbling upon is a better way to look at it. You just stumble upon on and yeah. Yes, and, and actually maybe something related to what Naomi has asked. Mm -hmm. How do you get to narrow down on financial services as your area which you will be writing on? How does someone choose? Eh? Maybe mm -hmm. you have many options which you think you are good at. How do mm -hmm. you choose to narrow down in an area? Uh, the best way to do that is to pick something you're really passionate about. And, but here's the thing. When you're starting out, sometimes you don't even know. Uh, because sometimes, because I, when I started, I didn't even know there's something called financial technology. So sometimes when you're starting, you don't even know. And sometimes, maybe it's good, especially when you're starting to try different things. Uh, don't uh, narrow just immediately, like you're getting in and you just decide, I'm going to do this. Uh, I think it's better if you try a few things and then when you start feeling like I can do this, I like doing this, then uh, you can go there. Uh, and again, even when you choose a niche, you might decide to have more than one. And you can, it, it will come down to how you market yourself. So for, for example, right now, I'm becoming very interested in artificial intelligence very interested and it became by chance because i had this client and i wrote for him a book on financial technology we just finished the book and he was like yeah i need you to write for me another book and i was like what kind of a book is like on artificial intelligence i was like no i i had i don't know much about that and he was like you wrote this book so nice and i think you should just do your research and write for me the ai book so I started writing. Right now I'm in chapter four, I think. And uh, it's becoming interesting as, we, as I go. And, and I'm feeling like I might include it as another niche that I might continue uh, trying to find work around. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you maybe, as you've, you mentioned, even with the tone, you probably also stumble upon this. As yeah, you... yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I think that's a better way to put it yeah you just stumble upon it yes mm, okay and how does it make you feel daniel when you write a complete book yet mm. your name is not appearing anywhere in that book does it make you feel like <laughs> it's a part of you no um yeah sometimes you write i was telling somebody sometimes you write some content even a blog post and you write it so nice you fall in love with it and um you feel like telling the client I'm not giving it to you. Uh, yeah, that can happen. The point is it can happen. But generally, no, I don't feel bad about it. Yeah, as long as they pay me the money we agreed, we're good. We're okay. good. And do you have plans to write your own book? Not yes, uh, yes, yes. Um, uh, I want to write fiction. Um, I have an idea. I'm doing some research. I want to do fiction. Okay. Okay. Creative. Yeah, creative fiction. Okay. <laughs> well enough. I see Geoffrey Mogere says, you make me remember how you encourage me into joining security industry. You are a blessing to me always. And very soon I'll join you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mogere. Yeah, yeah. He joined me in security and then he went to the I think he's the police service. So so it's like I put him on a path, yes. <laughs> okay, and yeah. seems like you're putting him in another path. Eh? Yeah, it's like I'm putting him on another path again. 
Yeah, and, and he says something here that this time round is going to venture into security blogging. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. For him, by the way, that's a perfect for him, perfect niche for him. Uh, especially, I don't know that I mentioned it to him. There are so many blogs that are into guns, and uh, many of us don't know what guns are. We just see them, <laughs> police are keeping an eye on the paper, so you can't ask me to write about guns. And if you are a good writer and you know about guns, perfect. Perfect. Yes. Okay. You can even start a blog about guns. Not necessarily like writing for other people. You can start a blog about guns. Uh, okay. And answer questions that people ask about guns online. <laughs> I think you, you can visit that blog and get shot. <laughs> <If> we... <laughs> no, there are so many people who ask about guns online, especially people who are in countries where citizens can buy guns. Um, yeah, they ask questions about guns. So how to use them, safety, uh, types, models, blah, 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 capacities, things like those. Mm. Yeah. It appears that there is a chance for everyone you can do there's a chance for everyone there is a chance especially for blogging part everybody has something uh that they can do that is interesting to other people you can write about gardening for example if you are into home gardening for example uh you can write about cooking if you are into cooking you can write about rearing chicken if you do have them you can write about a lot of stuff and if everybody has something can write about and and maybe that reminds me of a question that i'd intended to ask but i forgot it's mm. it was asked by kevin mm. and i uh, said um he asked how do you make money from blogging mm. please pardon you you had answered it earlier but he asked if you could be able to pardon that how you make money from blogging so there are several ways you can make money from blogging uh but as somebody said Monetizing your blog is an afternoon project. Like you can take three hours to make it start generating money. The biggest or the biggest obstacle, the biggest challenge is getting people to read your blog. So if you get people reading your blog, making money out of it is something you can fix within three hours or one hour, in fact. In fact, 30 minutes and you started making money. But anyways, the first way you make money through blogging is ads. And there are things called ad networks. Uh, one of the ad networks that is there and the one that people use and the one that doesn't have so many, doesn't need a lot of traffic is Google AdSense. It doesn't pay much. It pays very um, small amount. But if you big, have big traffic, you can make some reasonable amount. Um, then, but if you have more than 10,000 views a month, you can now look for other ad networks that pay be better. And if you reach 30,000, there are even there are ad networks that pay even better. And you reach 100,000 views a month, there are those ones that will pay you. If you are 100, there are those ones that you can make even $3,000 a month out of your blog. Um, so that's one way. The other way is through what you call uh, affiliate marketing. Uh, and affiliate marketing is whereby, for, let's say, for example, you write about um, guns. Let's say Mogera is writing about guns. Uh, <clears throat> he has a blog about guns, he's mentioning guns, explaining how guns are used, explaining how people should handle safety with guns, blah, 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 things like those. Then there are companies that sell guns, for example, or, or, or um, what do you call them? These are resources, bullets. Um, he can reach, can reach out to those companies. Of course, not to Kenyans, because Kenyan citizens don't buy guns. Okay, there are those who are licensed, but the numbers are not huge. I'm assuming he's targeting Americans who can buy guns like they're buying a bread, a bread or something. Um, so he can use links, special links that those manufacturers of guns, for example, will give him and when he mentions a gun, maybe you'll say, oh, there's this gun, it's used like this, it has this capacity, you can put that link. If somebody clicks on that link and goes and buys the gun, Mogare will get maybe 10% of what that person paid. So that is the second way you can do it. The third way is uh, reviews. Um, yeah, like somebody might pay, although that's not very ethical, 
uh, but people do it anyways. Um, a company approaches you, you have a very big following. They're like, oh, you can maybe do review us and then publish it on your blog. Mogere can take a company manufacturing guns or products that are related to guns can approach him and like, oh, do reviews about um, this product and explain to people how it works. And then he, they pay him for that. Yeah, so there are, those are some of the ways. Ads, affiliates, and then you can sell your own products. Um, for example, now I can't use guns because that is tricky with, with the laws and everything. For example, you write about, say what? Um, you write about, um, say fashion, women fashion. Uh, if you have a big traffic, you might decide to create a shop on your site and maybe link it to we call it drop shipping. For example, you create a shop and then you go to Alibaba or AliExpress. There is a way you can connect your shop to them so that if somebody buys something on your site, the order goes to the supplier in China and the supplier ships the product to the, to the person who ordered it. Uh, but you, the person who ordered paid you the money and you pay the Chinese guy his cut. Yeah, something like that. That's another option. Okay. And I believe that, you know, the, some of these things you can be able to explore and man, someone can reach out to you after and consult you on the same. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I would wish to ask you, Daniel, if, you, if maybe you had remained with something you would wish to, to present, you can be able to present. Uh, because I don't see further questions, even as we, if there is any further question, then someone will be able to ask. So if you had something that remained in your presentation, you can capture. Mm, no, I think I was done. Maybe I should only, may, I think I mentioned uh, having attention to detail is very important. Need passion, read a lot. Uh, there is no way you are going to be a writer and you don't read. Uh, read a lot, read a lot. Uh, do online courses, uh, go to Udemy or Skillshare. Uh, those ones are cheap. They are not very expensive. Udemy, you can buy a course, $10. 10. Um, Skillshare, I'm not very sure. I've never bought a course there. Uh, then you can use tools to use. You might need to use tools that will capture. Um, you, need, you need to be very careful with um, plagiarism. Uh, very, very careful. So you can find tools you can use to make sure that your content doesn't look like it's plagiarized. Like, and also tools to use like for making sure your grammar is good. Here is the thing. Uh, be, a few years back, Google did not have the capacity to tell whether your grammar is, you have grammatical errors in your text. But now they do with artificial intelligence. And when they detect that your your text your your content is is has those errors, then they they don't rank it high. I'm assuming in the case where say Mogera is writing a blog about ammunition, for example, then he has to make sure there are no grammatical. He can use a tool like Grammarly to fix that. Uh, uh, but also for clients, if some you're writing something for somebody, here's the thing: for most Kenyans, like I said. Generally, we, we like we, we don't look into things that in a very detailed way. So you can write for a Kenyan, and but for these people, say Americans, for example, uh, or these other people, you they might be angry at you because you missed a comma somewhere. Just a comma, nothing much. A comma, you get. That's how detailed you have to be. So yeah. I think um, I don't have more to say unless there's somebody with a question. So I'm seeing Liz Wafula is here, Karibu. Uh, yeah, people that I know. So. Hello. Yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Mm. I think uh, I, my mic had a challenge a bit, but here I am. Mm -hmm. So would I invite in any other question or any other contribution from anyone? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Invite. Let's watch our tuonge. So I can see Lydia Kimani, I can see Cecilia, Fanon, Kevin Gundi, Liz Wafula, Liz Ekakoro, all the way from Kakamega. Eh, you have to say something. You can't come all the way from Kakamega and don't say anything. And don't forget, Liz is all the way from Australia. She has to say something. Oh, yes. <laughs> so who do we yeah. go first? <laughs> we go from people who are very far. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you get taxed? That is that is Kevin Gundy asking. Do you get taxed? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tricky question. Yeah. Uh, tax is a very tricky. No, at the moment, no. Um, no, I don't get taxed. I don't think they've provided the, they've mentioned about taxing people who do online stuff. Um, but, you know, tax is them to force you to pay. Mm. So, yeah. If they, if they have not provided the necessary way you can do it. I, I think they are working on something. If I'm not wrong, I've heard that they are working on something. Uh, as of now, I've heard that you, if you do stuff online, especially freelancing, they, I think that you pay 10,000 for a whole year before they come up with a way to tax. Yeah. Okay. 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 You know, in Kenya, if not in Kenya really, but tax is one of those things that people would wish to talk last about. Yeah. <laughs> or not talk about at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so anyone would wish to share something? <laughs> could could anyone be struggling to say something? Okay. Like that? Yes, um, please. Proceed, Liz. Yeah, Liz, Liz, Liz is talking. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for the recognition. Um, yeah, I'm I'm grateful for for this session and I'd just like to say that um, yes, please, what I'm taking today is I should try to be an expert at something and then pay attention to detail. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Karibu, Karibu. She said something and yes, that yes you didn't, I don't know whether you heard me. Yeah. Yes, Daniel, proceed. Yeah, I'm saying she said something. She said she speaked, uh, the things she speaked, uh, uh, she should have attention to detail. And I'm forgetting the other thing she said. But yeah, she appreciates. Be, be an expert. Oh, yeah, yeah, ex expert. Be an expert yeah. at something. Yeah, as a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be an expert at something, but don't forget your writing skills. So improve your writing skills be an expert or something yeah 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 so you'd be like a consultant the people who are paid for what they you know for what they know not just for skills or writing skills but yeah mm, okay thank you very much liz yes uh hi i have a question sorry i came in late i got yeah, the time mixed up <laughs> I thought the meeting was starting in the next 30 minutes. Apparently, it's about to end. But anyway, I just first want mm. to say thank you. Thank you for this session. Uh, I, I wanted to find out if by any chance it was recorded. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Cap please. Recorded and we'll be able to provide the link uh, on Monday. Okay. So Asante. we will see if you are registered in the... If you are registered in the Eventbrite, then we'll be able to provide yeah. the, the, the link to you. If not, then you can be able to type your email at the chat, then we'll be able to send you yeah. the link. Or you can just check Writers okay. Guild Kenya, Facebook, uh, okay. not Facebook, but YouTube, YouTube channel. Liz. Sawa, yeah. Liz. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Gabriel is, is one of those people you should know. Uh <laughs> Okay, nice to know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very He's much. He's a very resourceful, yeah. very resourceful guy. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. 
yeah we'll get we'll we we'll want to know him more maybe on a different forum yeah thanks yeah ah thank you very much for that daniel <laughs> we are in this together yeah know. okay in, any other contribution i would really wish to hear from the faces i see here <laughs> Before we let uh, Daniel to go back and probably write an email, which will earn him half a million. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yes. <laughs> uh, can I say something? Hello, Elias. Yes. Yeah, go on. Yeah, Abarias Kumingi. I no, I'm hiding my face. Uh, pole sana uh, ni me feature sura yangu. Aina shida na kujua vile unaka. Sasa um, ni me freya sana kwa uh, yale ambayo ume tualeza kusiku ya leo. Japu kuwa ni me uh, ingia uh, um, uh, kama ni chalewa kidogo kwa sababu ya shubli zine. Uh, lakini ni me geo story. Uh, uh, he, Nimejua hadithi yako kwa muda sana kuanzia uh, nafikiria mwaka wa elfu mbili na kumina saba kama sijakosea. Mm -hmm. uh, um, jambo mbalo ni naeza toa kutoka kwa historia yako ni kwamba uh, tunaitaji kuwa innovative. Sijui neno la kiswahili ni lipi. Uh, wabunivu. Wabunifu. Inafatu yes. kwa uh, sababu hata shida mingi tunazo zipitia um, um, uh, zinakuwa kwamba hatukui wa bunifu inavyo takikana. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe I can switch back to English to ask the question. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, learning Swahili, tumekua tukiongea na Gabriel, tunataka tukua tunatumia Swahili kwa muda mwingi. Uh, yeah. Masa tunataka tuafunza watu ingine pia. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I did not uh, listen to how you started, but... Um, uh, uh, it is one thing that came to my mind uh, when you told your story some time back that uh, mm -hmm. you got a laptop and you invested in writing. Um, but some of us finish university, finish college, and we still do not have that idea of how to get a laptop, how to start writing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, we tend to... Um, uh, maybe to say, I don't have a laptop, so I don't have an opportunity. We give ourselves those uh, 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 small excuses. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know what you can say about that. I know uh, if there are no people here, there are still some people with Dean Writers Guild who still say, I cannot write because I am inconvenienced by going to the side. I am inconvenienced by not having a laptop. Uh, my, I don't have a smartphone, so I'm not able to write. Uh, uh, how would you encourage these people? Um, I will not say I am the best because that I mean, uh, ilifika, nilikuwa, nilifika mwesho haidi kwamba ni kategemea mzungu kunitumia pesa ili ninue uh, uh, kipakatalishi. Sasa, <laughs> 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 um, uh, najua, kuneza kwa na wale ambao, kwa na ule, uh, uh, that uh, limit of not having enough money to go and buy a laptop, yet we need to make money of writing maybe you will just say something thank you yes yes that's a major obstacle for many people they want to start but yeah they yeah they need a laptop or something to use uh there was a time but they but anyway depending on government is it's not always the best um way to live anyways um the government was about what to set up, uh, they were calling them digital centers or something uh, around the country. I don't know where that project reached, where young people will go and there's laptop and internet and they'll just use them and even a st recording studio or something uh, to help those that don't have laptop. Anyway, depending on government, it's, it's not the best way to live, as I said. Um, I think most people have smartphones. Most people have smartphones. Those don't, those who don't, I don't, most people have access or, or 
maybe there are very few who cannot get access to smartphones. But if you have a smartphone, you are good. If you ask me, you are very good. Just download the Google Doc thing. Start writing. Yeah, start writing. You can write. Let, here is the thing. I used to use my laptop, but nowadays I use. I told Liz. I, I've told Liz this story that I use my phone now to write. I I I don't use the laptop to write because I find the phone more comfortable for me. The most, some people it sounds weird. <laughs> But yeah. nowadays I use my phone to write. Yeah. Yeah, I use my phone to write. The only time I use the laptop is maybe when I'm, 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 I want to take the article through some program, maybe to check the grammar or yes, yeah. something like that. But even that, I found a way to download the app to my phone. So even when I'm writing, the app works on my phone. So let me say I use my phone to write now. The laptop is like is there. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. And you yeah. use your phone to write as a choice, not as a matter yeah, of as a choice. It's more comfortable. Is I find it I when I use the phone, I don't struggle to it's like things flow easier when I use the phone. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Elias, Muhatia, and uh, Daniel for the question and the answer. So maybe we can get a comment from one more, then we can close. Okay, Asante Sana. Asante Sana. Karim. <laughs> uh, anyone would wish to share an input? Maybe, uh, Daniel, even... Yes. Uh, um, I see someone has written here, Kate, mm -hmm. that the American space has free access to Wi-Fi and laptops. It's in town at Bazaar fifth floor. You first need to get an ID from the American embassy opposite UN in Gigiri. Mm -hmm. What you need is your national ID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is a, a very important input. Inform uh, that's a very good information. She said, where is that? I'm trying to... in, the, in the chat. She has uh, texted it in the chat. So uh -huh. there is this, actually, it is good to note, and thank you very much, Kate, for bringing it up. You can yeah. be a library user of um, um, the American Reference Center, which mm -hmm. is based at the, at the American Embassy. So you just go there with your ID, then you register, and they give you a card. Mm -hmm. Then that, you can be able to access their offices here at Bazaar mm -hmm. 5th, no? what uh, Kate has mentioned, and you can use their desktops there, Wi-Fi is there. You can that can be of help to you because it is. Is, is that in town, right? Yes, it is in town. Yeah, that's convenient. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah that's a good piece of information that can be shared to those who are like we don't have. Um, the so yeah. I see a few questions. Which app do you use with the phone? I use Google Docs. Uh, it's called what? Yeah, Google Docs. Yeah, to write. Sometimes I use another app called Keep. Uh, to write, but Google Docs works better. Uh, are there jobs? Editing. What do you need? This is a big, big like. Uh, yeah, a lot of jobs on editing. A lot. I used to. I I pay an editor sometimes to work on my article, especially when the client pays really well. I pay an editor to work on the on the on the articles. Yes, a lot of editing jobs, a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, you can be an ex an editor. Yeah, expert editor. Yes. And your editing should not be just to correct the grammar. It should be more to help with the narrative. I guess you get what I mean if you if you do that. And um, what did I want to say about it? And also editing, just like writing, you can choose to be an expert in a specific area. For example, when I work on my articles and I want an editor to look to have a look, I don't just hire anybody who is an editor. They might be a very good editor, but they will not understand the the jar the jargon and, and the the concepts that 
exist within the financial technology space. So I'll hire an editor who is, I know one lady who is, she, that's her area, she is very good at that. Yeah. But then there is a follow up question from Kate. She's asking, where can you get such jobs? The, the same place where you get writing jobs uh, freelancing sites, uh, call pitching. Uh, yeah, the same place, same places. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Any last uh, input? Thank you very much, Daniel. You know, your story is very inspiring since we met. Oh, um, Mr. Yeah. Gabriel. Yes, yes, Kevin. No? Kevin, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. <laughs> uh, sorry, I uh, just wanted to thank you, Mr. Daniel, yeah. for that wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you so much for all that you told us. I think uh, we've really had a very enlightening engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, maybe as a follow-up, maybe you'd uh, like to send us more resources online to help those of us who are just starting and try to, trying to develop their skills like me. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, about resources, there's something I'm doing now, which is you just send me a question. Of, I don't know whether that is kind of overwhelming over time, but hopefully I can catch up. Uh, you send me a question, my Facebook inbox, and then I create a post. I've decided to do that. Instead of answering somebody on Facebook in the chat, uh, I figured it's better if I pick one or two in a week and then I write a post and, and post it on my Facebook and also post it on my medium.com, yes. So mm. feel free to send me specific questions. Okay. And uh, yeah. so, All right, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. So that would mean uh, your name in Facebook is Daniel Ongera. And yes. Would you, would you mind if you share your email with them? So, My email is danielnyairo at gmail. It's that simple. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Bona Daniel, for sharing the information. You, I was so sad when I asked you to be able to share with Bona, and then you were happy to when you said that uh, you also you got a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a chance from someone. Someone mm -hmm. gave you the chance, gave you the information. The information, just the information. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I got other things from other people, but that information was a small piece of information, but it put me on a path. Yeah. yeah so I sometimes agree. what people need is just information, nothing much, just information, and they figure the, the rest for themselves. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, all. Thank you very much, Daniel. Yeah, maybe I will say thank you to Lydia, to, I see they are mentioning me, Jerusha. I spelled Ongera with a something. Uh, Jerusha, it's, it's O-N-G, and then there's that apostrophe on top, and then E-R-A, yes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, let me thank everyone. Yeah, this was interesting to me too. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Bana Daniel. I hope we, we, we share more. I hope maybe from here, one person will be able to get their footing like you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully many, not just one. Hopefully everyone who, who came here. Yeah. yeah, and thank you very much, everyone. I, would you allow me in just two minutes, uh, mm -hmm. because we have to finish by five, allow me to share with you just uh, a course which is offered by Writers Guild Kenya. And this mm -hmm. month, uh, we are having an intake in June. So you could be able to consider it. Um, I can be able to see Lydia here, Kevin, Fanon, who are the, some of the graduates of the last, uh, the, the last cohort that we had. So mm -hmm. if you allow me to just share my screen with you, then you can just be, I can just take you through it. Maybe you can know someone who can benefit from it, or you can be able to benefit from it yourself. 
uh, could be a good point to start if you think it is relevant for you. So uh, I don't know if you are able to see my screen. Not yet. Mm. Yeah, you can see it now. Okay. Okay. So the course is called Write Your Passion, and uh, it's focusing especially on those who wish to start uh, writing on the nonfiction side. But we've also realized that a number of people from fiction uh, find it useful because now with creative nonfiction and um, the, inter the, the, the fact of fiction being interlinked with nonfiction, you find that both people get it, uh, find it useful. So the course is five weeks. Uh, initially, it used to be uh, a physical one delivered at Strathmore University. But now uh, we will do, for the June session, we will do it online. The strength of the course is the, the personalized attention and the personalized interaction. So a typical class would be like this. You come to class, and uh, maybe the first time you share what you'd wish to write about, then you, you are asked to write something. Then the next time your article is read in class and then uh, people share their opinion how you can be able to do it better. And this is typical for all the classes. So the interaction is personalized and uh, you get to get the feedback that can be able to help you improve as you write. So some of the, just briefly, though you can be able to get this from Writer's Guild, but some of the topics that we look at is where to begin, step towards telling your story, why should you write, the context of writing and reading in Africa. Then we look at great writers or great reading habits. That is a case study. We reevaluate your writing story, eh, if you have any, and all of us do have. This is very important because it's, it helps you to, to figure out where you can be able to start. What Daniel was saying is, uh, if you are an accountant, you'd better you'd probably do better writing things to do with accounting. So what's your journey as a writer? And then the art and business of writing. And part two of that is um, writing the book. You want to read this, a physical activity, virtue in writing, writing for a higher purpose. And all that, that forms the where to begin, steps towards telling your story. Then on 13th June, we look at the, the road less traveled, options it takes to tell your story. So during the last class, this session was uh, conducted by Mr. Joe Hamisi. I don't know if you know him. He's a former MP. Yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, he's written quite some books, including Looters and Grabbers, one, one book which was one bank in Kenya. Then the road less traveled, options, to, 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 options it takes to tell your story. So this you narrow down. You, you now get to your, your own area. And the part two of that is image in writing. You will be told, you know, how to tell your story in a way that you give the picture to someone. The person who, who conducted this last time and who do it again is called Joan Thatia from Daily Nation. You may read her articles in the papers today in the, in the Daily Nation. Then in the, on 20th of June, we look at editing and the role it plays in your work. Uh, many people say that Writing is uh, it's just the first step, but rewriting is what makes a writer. It's true, yeah. true. Yeah, so we look at this, and this is uh, was is facilitated by Mr. Lucas Wafula, who is a former publishing director at East African Educational Publishers, and has also worked with quite a number of other publishers for 25 years. Then the part two of that, we have an address by a published writer. So... Previously, we've had Jackson Biko join us for this. So he comes to share his story, and then we can be able to, to engage with him, more like a public lecture, but just to, to reinforce what we've learned so far. So starting from the fourth week, second week, and the third week. Then on 27th of June, we have the practical writer. Now the practical writer, all this, you've been coming to class with what you've written, and then we give it an input. That is our strength. We try to make it as practical as possible. So on this day, we have a practical writer where the whole day is uh, dedicated to um, giving input to your work, very specific and personalized input to your work. Then the last week is the publishing laboratory where we look at 
avenues of publishing, why you should publish the future of the written word. Uh, this is where we look at the ever um, controversial area of self-publishing or conventional publishing or different avenues like eBooks or Amazon, whichever way you may want to give your work as an outlet channel to the outside world. What are some of the advantages of using what? And what are some of the disadvantages? And which way is good for you? Then we look at some intangibles, some of the things that come with our writing. They affect our writing in one way or another. And uh, though they may not be part of this. So we look at legal issues such as copyright, plagiarism, writing, as a, writing and reading as a habit, where we look at some other lifelong things that you do to make you a better writer. And that is what one which uh, Daniel mentioned about being an expert in something. Yeah? So this also really emphasizes on the same. Then marketing your work to 21st century buyer and beating writer's block, among other many other takeaways that, you, that will be able to facilitate your writing. But uh, as we mentioned, is the, the, five, the five weeks are just a point to start. Then for the next one year, every month, we try to bring our writers together to follow up on each other. So during the class, we, put, uh, we, we set goals. Then we try to help follow up with time because you realize that writing, uh, sometimes we have what we need, but we just lack the company and the encouragement to take it out there. So that is what we aim to try to do that. So you can be able to explore this. And um, if you think it is right for you, then you can be able to reach out to us and take part in the course. Now, right now we are remaining with only five chances because it's a personalized course and we only take a specific number per intake to help us deliver on the, the personalized bit of it. The cost is 39,000 Kenya shillings uh, and that covers everything that comes with the course, but this time there is a 25% lockdown uh, discount, which, which translates to 29,500, which you pay within the, the, the class period. So if you'd be interested in the course, you can be able to reach out to us through email, or I can be able to type the, uh, the phone number. Our email is write at writersguild.co.ke. So you can be able to reach out to us um, just projecting the, the number through which you can be able to reach out or you can give someone who is interested. So this is our number, 0751-562-750. And the email is write at writersguild.co.ke. So I hope maybe that can be a good place to start for someone owing to what we've shared today. Okay, so uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Thank you for staying on. Thank you for participating actively. Thank you for learning. Now, um, as one time I read that someone was giving a speech and he gave a speech and when he concluded, he said, and now may you pray for me so that all that I said here, I may practice them. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Go and all that uh, when Daniel shared all that you learned from here, you may practice there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much. Oh, Daniel, do you have a last one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say I'm happy that people showed up. Uh, yeah. So and we shared uh, this afternoon, and, and that's yeah, that made our lives, I guess, better. All of us. <laughs> yeah. okay. Thank you very much, Bana Daniel, for your time and for the for the insights that you've shared with us, for your selflessness, most of all. Since we met, I've always appreciated and really uh, loved your selflessness. You share information so selflessly, even through Facebook, through all the channels that you use. May you keep going in that way, and may we keep growing each other so that yeah. we can write more. And we can be able to leave off writing. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you all. You are free to leave. And you are even more free to put your video and uh, say hi as you go. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Okay.